There are two fundamental theorems of welfare economics. The first theorem states that a market will tend toward a competitive equilibrium that is weakly Pareto optimal when the market maintains the following three attributes, 1. Complete markets as no transaction costs and because of this each actor also has perfect information. 2. Price-taking behavior as no monopolists and easy entry and exit from a market. Furthermore, the first theorem states that the equilibrium will be fully Pareto optimal with the additional condition of 3. Local non-satiation of preferences as for any original bundle of goods there is another bundle of goods arbitrarily close to the original bundle, but that is preferred. The second theorem states that out of all possible Pareto optimal outcomes one can achieve any particular one by enacting a lump sum wealth redistribution and then letting the market take over. <laughs> Implications of the first theorem The first theorem is often taken to be an analytical confirmation of Adam Smith's invisible hand hypothesis, namely that competitive markets tend toward an efficient allocation of resources. The theorem supports a case for non-intervention in ideal conditions, let the markets do the work and the outcome will be Pareto efficient. However, Pareto efficiency is not necessarily the same thing as desirability, it merely indicates that no one can be made better off without someone being made worse off. There can be many possible Pareto efficient allocations of resources and not all of them may be equally desirable by society. This appears to make the case that intervention has a legitimate place in policy. Redistributions can allow us to select from all efficient outcomes for one that has other desired features, such as distributional equity. The shortcoming is that for the theorem to hold, the transfers have to be lump sum and the government needs to have perfect information on individual consumers' tastes as well as the production possibilities of firms. An additional mathematical condition is that preferences and production technologies have to be convex. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Proof of the first theorem. The first fundamental theorem was first demonstrated graphically by economist Abba Lerner and mathematically by economists Harold Hotelling, Oscar Lang, Morris Allais, Lionel McKenzie, Kenneth Arrow and Gerard Debreu. The theorem holds under general conditions. The formal statement of the theorem is as follows: if preferences are locally non-satiated and if x y p Display style math bf x caret asterisk math bf y caret asterisk math bf p is a price equilibrium with transfers. Then the allocation x y display style math bf x caret asterisk math bf y caret asterisk is Pareto optimal. An equilibrium in this sense either relates to an exchange economy only or presupposes that firms are allocatively and productively efficient, which can be shown to follow from perfectly competitive factor and production markets, given a set G of types of goods we work in the real vector space over G Display style math b r carrot g and use boldface for vector valued variables. For instance, if g equals butter, cookies, milk, display style g equals l brace text butter text cookies text milk r brace, then r g Display style math b r caret g would be a three-dimensional vector space, and the vector one, two, three. Display style langle one, two, three wrangle would represent the bundle of goods containing one unit of butter, two units of cookies, and three units of milk. Suppose that consumer I has wealth. 
W I display style W underscore I such that Sigma I W I equals P E plus Sigma J P Y J Display style sigma underscore i w underscore i equals math bf p c d o t math bf e plus sigma underscore j math bf p c d o t math bf y underscore j carrot asterisk where e display style math bf e is the aggregate endowment of goods, i.e., the sum of all consumer and producer endowments, and Y J display style math bf y underscore j carrot asterisk is the production of firm J preference maximization from the definition of price equilibrium with transfers implies using greater than i display style greater than underscore i to denote the preference relation for consumer i if x i greater than i x i display style math bf x underscore i greater than underscore i math bf x underscore i caret asterisk then p x i greater than w i Display style Math BF P C D O T Math BF X underscore I greater than Math BF W underscore I In other words, if a bundle of goods is strictly preferred to X I Display style Math BF X underscore I carrot asterisk It must be unaffordable at price P Display style Math BF P Local non-satiation additionally implies if x i i x i display style math bf x underscore i g e q underscore i math bf x underscore i caret asterisk then p x i w i display style math bf p c d o t math bf x underscore i g e q math bf w underscore i to c y imagine that x i i x i display style math bf x underscore i g e q underscore i math bf F x underscore i carrot asterisk but p x i w i display style math b f p c d o t math b f x underscore i. Then by local non satiation we could find x i display style math b f x underscore i arbitrarily close to x i. Display style math bf x underscore i, and so still affordable, but which is strictly preferred to x i. Display style math bf x underscore i caret asterisk, but x i. Display style math bf x underscore i caret asterisk is the result of preference maximization, so this is a contradiction. An allocation is a pair x y display style math bf x math bf y where x element of pi i element of i r g Display style math bf x in pi underscore i in i math b r carrot g and y element of pi j element of j r g display style math bf y in pi underscore j in j math b r carrot g i e x 
Display style Math BF X is the matrix allowing potentially infinite rows, columns, whose ith column is the bundle of goods allocated to consumer I and Y Display style Math BF Y is the matrix whose JTH column is the production of firm J. We restrict our attention to feasible allocations which are those allocations in which no consumer sells or producer consumes goods which they lack, i.e., for every good and every consumer that consumer's initial endowment plus their net demand must be positive similarly for producers. Now consider an allocation X Y Display style math BF X, math BF Y that Pareto dominates X Y Display style math BF X carrot asterisk Y carrot asterisk This means that X I I X I Display style Math BF X underscore I GEQ underscore I Math BF X underscore I carrot asterisk for all I and X I greater than I X I Display style Math BF X underscore I greater than underscore I Math BF X underscore I carrot asterisk For some I by the above, we know P X I W I display style math BF P C D O T math BF X underscore I G E Q W underscore I for all I and P X I greater than W I Display style Math BF P C D O T Math BF X underscore I greater than W underscore I for some I summing we find Sigma I P X I greater than Sigma I W I equals Sigma J P Y J Display style Sigma underscore I Math BF P C D O T Math BF X underscore I greater than Sigma underscore I W underscore I equals Sigma underscore J Math BF P C D O T Math BF Y underscore J carrot asterisk Because Y Display style math BF Y carrot asterisk is profit maximizing, we know Sigma J P Y J Sigma J P Y J Display style sigma underscore j math bf p c d o t y underscore j carrot asterisk g e q sigma underscore j p c d o t y underscore j so sigma i p x i greater than sigma j p Y J Display style Sigma underscore I Math BF P C D O T Math BF X underscore I greater than Sigma underscore J Math BF P C D O T Math BF Y underscore J But goods must be conserved so Sigma I X I greater than Sigma J Y J Display style Sigma underscore I Math BF X underscore I greater than Sigma underscore J Math BF Y underscore J Hence X Y 
display style math bf x math bf y is not feasible since all pareto dominating allocations are not feasible x y display style math bf x caret asterisk math bf y caret asterisk must itself be pareto optimal note that while the fact that y display style math bf y caret asterisk is profit maximizing is simply assumed in the statement of the theorem the result is only useful interesting to the extent such a profit maximizing allocation of production is possible Fortunately, for any restriction of the production allocation, y display style math bf y caret asterisk and price to a closed subset on which the marginal price is bounded away from zero, e.g., any reasonable choice of continuous functions to parameterize possible productions, such a maximum exists. This follows from the fact that the minimal marginal price and finite wealth limits the maximum feasible production zero limits the minimum and Tikhonov's theorem ensures the product of these compact spaces is compact ensuring us a maximum of whatever continuous function we desire exists. <laughs> Proof of the second fundamental theorem The second theorem formally states that, under the assumptions that every production set y j is convex and every preference relation i is convex and locally non-satiated, any desired Pareto efficient allocation can be supported as a price quasi-equilibrium with transfers. Further assumptions are needed to prove this statement for price equilibria with transfers. The proof proceeds in two steps. First, we prove that any Pareto efficient allocation can be supported as a price quasi equilibrium with transfers. Then, we give conditions under which a price quasi equilibrium is also a price equilibrium. Let us define a price quasi equilibrium with transfers as an allocation x y display style x caret asterisk y caret asterisk a price vector p and a vector of wealth levels w achieved by lump sum transfers with sigma i w i equals p omega plus sigma j p y j Display style sigma underscore i w underscore i equals p c d o t omega plus sigma underscore j p c d o t y underscore j caret asterisk where omega display style omega is the aggregate endowment of goods and y j display style y underscore j caret asterisk is the production of firm J such that I P Y J P Y J Display style P C D O T Y underscore J L E Q P C D O T Y underscore J carrot asterisk for all Y J element of y j display style y underscore j in y underscore j firms maximize profit by producing y j display style y underscore j caret asterisk e for all i if x i greater than i X I display style x underscore i greater than underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk then p x i w 
I Display style P C D O T X underscore I G E Q W underscore I If X I Display style X underscore I is strictly preferred to X I Display style X underscore I carrot asterisk then it cannot cost less than x i display style x underscore i caret asterisk e sigma i x i equals omega plus sigma j y j Display style sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk equals omega plus sigma underscore j y underscore j caret asterisk. Budget constraint satisfied. The only difference between this definition and the standard definition of a price equilibrium with transfers is in statement e. The inequality is weak here. P x i w I display style p c d o t x underscore i g e q w underscore i, making it a price quasi equilibrium. Later, we will strengthen this to make a price equilibrium. Define v i display style v underscore i to be the set of all consumption bundles strictly preferred to x. I display style x underscore i caret asterisk by consumer i and let v be the sum of all v i display style v underscore i v i display style v underscore i is convex due to the convexity of the preference relation i display style geq underscore i v is convex because every v i display style v underscore i is convex similarly y plus omega display style y plus omega the union of all production sets y I display style y underscore i plus the aggregate endowment is convex because every y i display style y underscore i is convex. We also know that the intersection of v and y plus omega display style y plus omega must be empty, because if it were not it would imply there existed a bundle that is strictly preferred to x y display style x caret asterisk y caret asterisk by everyone and is also affordable. This is ruled out by the Pareto optimality of x y display style x caret asterisk y caret asterisk these two convex, non-intersecting sets allow us to apply the separating hyperplane theorem. This theorem states that there exists a price vector P does not equal 0 P neq 0 and a number R such that P Z R Display style p c d o t z g e q r for every z element of v display style z in v and p z r display style p c d o t z l e q r for every z element of Y plus Omega 
display style z in y plus omega in other words there exists a price vector that defines a hyperplane that perfectly separates the two convex sets next we argue that if x i i x i display style x underscore i g e q underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk for all i then p sigma i x i r display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i g e q r this is due to local non-satiation there must be a bundle x i display style x underscore i arbitrarily close to x i display style x underscore i that is strictly preferred to x i display style x underscore i caret asterisk and hence part of v i display style v underscore i so p sigma i x i r display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i g e q r taking the limit as x i x i display style x underscore i right arrow x underscore i does not change the weak inequality so p sigma i x i r display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i g e q r as well in other words x I display style x underscore i is in the closure of v. Using this relation, we see that for x i display style x underscore i caret asterisk itself p sigma i x i r display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk g e q r we also know that sigma i x i element of y plus omega display style sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk in y plus omega so p sigma i x i r display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk l e q r as well combining these we find that P sigma i x i equals a display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk equals r. We can use this equation to show that x y p display style x caret asterisk y caret asterisk p fits the definition of a price quasi equilibrium with transfers because p sigma i x i equals a display style p c d o t sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk equals r and sigma i x i equals omega 
plus sigma j y j display style sigma underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk equals omega plus sigma underscore j y underscore j caret asterisk we know that for any firm j p omega plus y j plus sigma h y h R equals P Omega plus Y J plus Sigma H Y H Display style P C D O T Omega plus Y underscore J plus Sigma underscore H Y underscore H carrot Asterisk LEQR equals P C D O T Omega plus Y underscore J carrot asterisk plus Sigma underscore H Y underscore H carrot asterisk for H does not equal J Display style H N E Q J which implies P Y J P Y J display style P C D O T Y underscore J L E Q P C D O T Y underscore J carrot asterisk. Similarly, we know P X I plus sigma K X K R equals P X I plus Sigma K X K display style P C D O T X underscore I plus Sigma underscore K X underscore K carrot asterisk G E Q R equals P C D O T X underscore I carrot asterisk plus Sigma underscore K X underscore K carrot asterisk for K does not equal I display style K N E Q I which implies P X I P X I display style P C D O T X underscore I G E Q P C D O T X underscore I carrot asterisk. These two statements, along with the feasibility of the allocation at the Pareto optimum, satisfy the three conditions for a price quasi equilibrium with transfers supported by wealth levels. W I equals P X I display style W underscore I equals P C D O T X underscore I carrot asterisk for all I. We now turn to conditions under which a price quasi equilibrium is also a price equilibrium. In other words, conditions under which the statement if X I greater than I X I display style X underscore I greater than underscore I X underscore I carrot asterisk then P X I W I display style P C D O T X underscore I G E Q W underscore I Impulse. If x i greater than i x i display style x underscore i greater than underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk, then p x i greater than w i 
Display style P C D O T X underscore I greater than W underscore I. For this to be true, we need now to assume that the consumption set X I display style X underscore I is convex, and the preference relation I display style G E Q underscore I is continuous. Then, if there exists a consumption vector x i display style x underscore i such that x i element of x i display style x underscore i in x underscore i and p x i w i display style p c d o t x underscore i a price quasi equilibrium is a price equilibrium. To see why, assume to the contrary x i greater than i x i display style x underscore i greater than underscore i x underscore i caret asterisk and p x i equals w i display style p c d o t x underscore i equals w underscore i and x i display style x underscore i exists. Then by the convexity of x i display style x underscore i we have a bundle x i equals alpha x i plus one minus alpha x i element of x i display style x underscore i equals alpha x underscore i plus one alpha x underscore i in x underscore i with p x i w i display style p c d o t x underscore i by the continuity of i display style geq underscore i for alpha display style alpha close to 1 we have alpha x i plus 1 minus alpha x i greater than i X I display style alpha x underscore I plus one alpha x underscore I greater than underscore I x underscore I carrot asterisk. This is a contradiction because this bundle is preferred to x I display style x underscore I carrot asterisk and costs less than W i display style w underscore i hence for price quasi equilibria to be price equilibria it is sufficient that the consumption set be convex the preference relation to be continuous and for there always to exist a cheaper consumption bundle x i display style x underscore i one way to ensure the existence of such a bundle is to require wealth levels W I display style W underscore I to be strictly positive for all consumers I. Topic: Related theorems. Because of welfare economics close ties to social choice theory, Arrow's impossibility theorem is sometimes listed as a third fundamental theorem. The ideal conditions of the theorems, however, are an abstraction. The Greenwald Stiglitz theorem, for example, states that in the presence of either imperfect information, or incomplete markets, markets are not Pareto efficient. Thus, in real-world economies, the degree of these variations from ideal conditions must factor into policy choices. Further, even if these ideal conditions hold, the first welfare theorem fails in an overlapping generations model. See also Convex preferences Variance theorems – A competitive equilibrium is both Pareto efficient and envy-free. General equilibrium theory 